The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Henry, Ralph, Mary, Edna, Joe, Elaine, Justin, names that mean nothing to most of you except for maybe a few people in the front row over there. Those are a couple of the saints that for me I have encountered or crossed paths with in my lifetime. And one thing that is always reassuring to me is that when we gather here on Sunday mornings, they're here. They're here every Sunday morning as we gather to celebrate Christ's victory over death. They're here each Sunday as we gather at this table to share in the Lord's Supper. They're here because they're also a part of that great cloud of witnesses. The faithful who have gone before us that they now, yes, rest in Christ's presence, in God's care that we will again see one day. But they're here today too. Many more of the saints other than the ones that I've named of are thought about today. They're written on the front of the, author, of the altar cloth that people were invited to put names on. We'll hear them as the bell is tolled and we light a candle in their honor later today. And you'll have a chance to light a candle in memory of ones that we don't get to name out loud this morning. And we get to honor of them by bringing their pictures to remind us of their presence with us in this space each time we gather at Christ's table. All Saints Sunday is one of those days of the church year that I think is, is important. It's meaningful for people. <clears throat> Part of that is because it comes with so many mixed feelings and mixed emotions as we gather. Because there are so many similar things to what we might do when we gather at a memorial service or a funeral service for a loved one. Even the cross and the candles sit where a casket or the urn sits as we say those final goodbyes to our loved ones. Now let's face it, whether your loss is recent or whether it's a long time in the past, that pain and grief doesn't go away. And so as we gather this morning, it's, it's a day to remember, and yes, we may continue to grieve, but hopefully we do so today in a slightly different way. You see, All Saints is a time for us to remember and trust in the promise that we are part of something much larger and much greater than just ourselves. That we are a part of God's people. All of us, even Mr. Whitmer, who uh, chuckled in the choir up here. That we are all a part of God's people, claimed and cleansed and marked with the sign of Christ in baptism. And because of that, we get to hear the words like we hear in Ephesians this morning that we are inheritors of eternal life and inheritors of all kinds of wonderful gifts and blessings from God. 
Our second reading that we heard from Ephesians begins, In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance. That inheritance is about eternal life. That inheritance is about forgiveness and love. That inheritance is about God changing us from just sinful people to be able to receive that title of saint. The people that we lift up this morning, I know at least the people in my mind and in my heart this morning, I lift them up as saints, but they were far from perfect. Each in their own ways, they were flawed and broken human beings just like you and just like me. In need of God's grace, in need of God's love, in need of God's presence in their lives. Let's face it, sometimes the brokenness is what made them a lot of fun, too. But luckily, those things that we need, we have a God who delivers those things in our inheritance through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Him, in Jesus, grace abounds. The gift of inheritance that we hear about in our reading from Ephesians this morning, it it doesn't erase, it doesn't take away the fact that we are sinners. It's part of who we are. It's part of our human existence and reality. But what it does is it celebrates the fact that despite our sin, despite our flaws, and despite our brokenness, God cleanses us, claims us, and calls us saints because of the life, death, resurrection, and love of Jesus Christ. On All Saints Sunday, we probably hear a lot in Lutheran churches about that theology of sinner and saint all at the same time. And for me, every time I hear that language, it takes me back to a story of working in a nursing home. And it's working in a nursing home as a probably a freshman in college over a Christmas break or summer break, most likely, I think. And I was working nights. I was an aide on a couple different floors in the Dubois nursing home, and most of what I did was odds and ends. The little stuff like cleaning the garbage cans out and filling up water bottles and all of that kind of little stuff. But probably the most important thing I did each night was I was the one that had to sit down, go through every single resident's charts, and find the places that needed to have physicians' signatures for particular orders for medications, things like that. And every night as I sat there, without fail, there's this woman. And I can remember her. I have no idea how old she was. Her name has long since escaped my memory. But I can still picture her. Very tiny, slim, long silver gray hair. And she would walk around most of the evening kind of just muttering to herself. Dementia had taken a terrible toll on her mind. But each night she would especially go round and round and round the nurse's station. And that's where I had to sit in order to do all of these things with the charts. And so as I sat there, usually one time around, she would come by and she would walk behind me and she would pat me on the head and she would say, You are an angel. You are sent by God. It was wonderful for the ego. And yet then the next time around, it would always be just the opposite. Because usually the opposite happened on the next time around, it would be a smack upside the head. You're the devil. You're evil. It was a sad state of where she was with her dementia, but I thought a wonderful statement of our human existence. Saint and sinner all at the same time. Luther describes, Luther describes a saint, as I mentioned with the children this morning, as a forgiven sinner. He goes on to say that we're called saints not because, not because we change into something different, but because our relationship with God changes as a result of God's grace. I want to read that for you one more time because I think it's important. We are called saints not because we change into something different, but because our relationship with God changes as a result of God's grace. That title of saint is God's doing. And we've probably all had relationships with someone that just changed your life forever, right? Whether it was a spouse, a mentor, a parent, a child, a student, a teacher, 
we've more than likely had those people that have altered the course of our lives in big or small ways. It may even be that the name that you wrote on the altar cloth or the person that you'll name and think of later on, it might be one of those people. Today we celebrate them. We celebrate those people who have made that impact and that life-altering difference for us. But more importantly, we celebrate and remember that God worked through them. That God called them saints despite their flaws and gifted them for reaching out to others with God's love. Our reading from Ephesians says, So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope of to which he has called you? What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? This reading from Ephesians, and especially that section, is a reminder for us that it's that inheritance, it's that relationship with God that has changed our lives most. More than any other person we could light a candle for or toll the bell for, Jesus Christ has changed our lives the most. As we live, we strive to see and hope. We try to see with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, the language that's used in Ephesians. We strive to see the hope and richness of the inheritance that God has called us to. I think it's what we as Christians especially need to remember each day especially in the face of deepening divides in our nation, our communities, and in the world, especially with the decline of church and faith as that central part of our society and community. We as Christians, we as disciples, have to know the hope that we are called to, the inheritance that we receive from Jesus Christ. Because it's that inheritance that claims us, cleanses us, calls us, and offers us a challenge, the challenge of being Christ's disciples. And it's a hope that's not just for us, but it's for the entire world. <clears throat> this morning on All Saints Sunday, we, we gather and we will read names. We will toll the bell, we will light candles, and we will remember those saints. But today isn't just about them. It's about how God's grace God's hope, and God's inheritance has moved people for generations to be faithful disciples. And how that same inheritance, that same promise and hope still moves us as individuals and as God's church today. Until the day when we can all gather around God's throne and sing our praises together, we catch glimpses of the kingdom more fully at work glimpses of the community of saints, especially most often as we gather at this table. When we gather here with those who have gone before us into the church triumphant, we get to share again a meal, even if just for a brief moment. And it's a meal that's hosted by Jesus himself. At this table each week, we gather with the saints of all times and of all places to be fed, to be filled, and to be sent to be God's resurrection people so that we can look to God with the eyes of our hearts enlightened in order to better see the blessings and the power of the inheritance that God has given to his entire family of the body of Christ. All Saints Day can be an emotional day. The cross sits centrally in our midst this morning. In the same place where many of us have watched urns and caskets of our loved ones during a funeral service. Today we rejoice. We rejoice in the reality that your loved ones, my loved ones, all of the saints aren't held in any casket or urn. Because we are inheritors of God. We are inheritors of God's greatest gift of all, eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen.